It's time for another closer look at a key Kentucky Derby contender. And here's your host, Magic. Welcome to RadioNews.com. I'm Magic. He's Mike Samich in Kentucky Derby Future Wager. Pool 5 has officially begun. And Mike Samich, we've got an interesting group of 24 betting options here. Let's take a look. All of the three-year-olds is finally not favorite because we're finally at the point where we can understand who is likely for the Kentucky Derby. Your favorite, number seven, Epicenter, five to one. Smile Happy, number 17, six to one. Who is still betting Smile Happy, Mike? A Mattress Mac, maybe? <laughs> I'm not sure outside of that, but uh, he's got deep pockets and can affect these pools quite a bit. Yeah, it's interesting. This is the first time we're going to have the Yafferts that are involved here um, kind of coming into the pool. So you're going to see for the first time Messier and a couple other horses that we haven't seen on this list before. And that's really negatively affecting that all of the three-year-olds, which now looks like a great number from the last pool because you're getting all of these Yaffert horses coming in. Yeah, absolutely. We'll take a quick look here on the screen. This was how the odds ended for Kentucky Derby Future Wager Pool 4 just a few weeks ago, and all of the three-year-olds ended as the 4-1 to one favorite. And as you said, Mike, uh, the big reason that this is different, Messier now officially on here at 8-1. to one. Um, We also have Wade Barrio at 8-1, to one, who won the Grade 1 Florida Derby. So looking at this initially, who stands out to you as offering value in Pool 5? Well, it's interesting. This is the first time the pool is going to close at 1.30 Eastern before all of the preps run on Saturday. I think that's a huge point here because it really depends on what you want to wager in those preps and how you want to take it on. Because if you look at two specific horses that we can focus on here, let's talk a little bit here about Messier. Let's talk a little about Forbidden Kingdom. You've got Messier, eight to one. Forbidden Kingdom, eight to one. Guess what? One of them's going to route the other. They're even money in six to five. You ain't getting eight to one on whichever one wins. So if you like one of them, it may not be a bad idea to throw a couple shekels here on the future pool because you're going to get a significantly better price on the winner of the Santa Anita Derby just a mere, what, three hours later than you would when on the Kentucky Derby Day. So I think that's one way you can kind of look at this. Um, you know, if you like a horse like Crown Pride, you're not getting 50 to 1 on Derby Day. I think that's somewhere that you can look and can I take a shot at it. I think Charge It is probably going to be under 12 to 1 on Derby Day. I'll be interested to see what Charge It ends up in this pool. And then, you know, as a horse like Smile Happy, who's sitting on the board at six to one, I don't think is going to go off at six to one. Um, we often look at the overseas pools and kind of check out where the example is. Smile Happy is sitting between 16 and 20 to one overseas. So I would expect Smile Happy floats up in that pool. And if he doesn't, I kind of am a little interested in Smile Happy at 20 to one, especially if you can bet it right after they run at Keeneland, which is something you often can do in those overseas pools if you hit it right away when they cross the finish line. Right, and it's a great reminder that the Kentucky Derby future wager pools that Churchill Downs puts on, they are limited to uh, betting with ADW stateside. So if you are an overseas or an international player, uh, you are not able to take advantage of this pool. However, you can get fixed odds on it, and sometimes that's where the value is. So, for example, a horse like Smile Happy, 6-1, to one, uh, the morning line here, because of Mattress Mag, will probably be very close to 6-1, to one, if not under 6-1, to one, when they finally end this on Saturday morning. This morning for me. Uh, Mike, what about the international odds? Are there any fixed odds that you like or that make you like a horse better than what you're seeing here? Well, I think if we're going to look at one of the fixed odds numbers here, and, and we'll flip over here to some of the international fixed odds, Smile Happy on this board sitting at 16 to 1. I, I'm kind of interested in Smile Happy a little at 16 to 1. It's the first time we've seen this horse at a larger number. Um, Smile Happy has been the, the perennial favorite here in these derby pools early. We're going to see him second off the layoff at Keeneland on Saturday. Third off the layoff will be the Churchill Stars to be able to make it. So if you're a fan of Smile Happy, I think that 16 to 1 is not a bad number there. Uh, but to me, when I look at this, you know, it's tough because right now I would be between Epicenter, White of Barrio, and the winner of the Messier Forbidden Kingdom for my, my derby pick. Way too early derby pick. All of those are too short for me to really be interested in playing. I don't want to tie up money at 6-1, to 9-1, to one, or 10-1 to one on any of those horses when I don't know if they're going to really be in the gate. And I'm probably going to get half that on derby day, maybe a little bit better for some of these. Like, look, White of Barrio... The final time wasn't as great as we expected. My guess is he's going to be sitting on the board at 7-8-1. to one. Why lock in 9-1 to one a month early? So you really got to be careful when you're playing these things. You know, if you like someone like Ethereal Road, if you like someone like Mo Donegal here sitting at 25-1, to one, he's not going to be 25-1 to one if he goes out and wins the wood on Saturday. So to me, that would be kind of the horse that I would look at. If, you, if you're looking for value, I'd be looking for horses that I think can win on Saturday. And to me, that points to two main ones here, right? If Emmanuel or Mo Donegal wins Saturday, they are going to plummet in the odds pool and be bet on Derby Day. So if you like either of them, those would be the two I looked at. I would look at at this point. I would stray away from playing most of these futures 
because we're too close to it to get a monster number. I'm looking for 50 to one, 75 to one, 100 to one. Um, and we're just we're not getting any horses that I think are really, really contenders at those numbers. There's two that are at the very bottom of the page that actually catch my eye because they are not part of Kentucky Derby Future Wager Pool 5, and that's Rattle and Roll at 33-1. to 1. AP Secret at 40-1. to 1. Both of those horses running this weekend, Rattle and Roll, will be in the Bluegrass Stakes. And by the way, he won the Grade 1 Claiborne Breeders Future Charity over this course last fall, going two turns. So he's returning to a track that we know that he likes. He's going to be going a distance that we know that he should be suited for. He's not available in Kentucky Derby Future Wager Pool 5. And if he wins the Grade 1 Bluegrass or... If AP Secret wins the Grade 2 Wood Memorial on Saturday, you're not getting those kinds of prices on Derby Day. Now, they're not going to be the favorites in those races but uh, or in the Kentucky Derby. But I, if you want to get them at some value, this is a spot to get them. And part of it, Mike, is because Jack Christopher's on this list. My Prankster is on this list. Dean's list is on this list. Uh, a lot of horses that we know are not going to be in the Kentucky Derby. Well, and this isn't even the full list either. That's one of the things about these overseas. I could, I could have scrolled down and gotten a whole other page, and all that does is eat the VIG, right? So if you have horses that you can eliminate, it allows you to not pay as much juice on some others. Future Ragers generally are not great bets. Um, they're, they're usually the higher hold for most casinos and most offshore books. So there's something you want to stray away from if you're not getting a big-time number. But the other thing, like I said, is if, if you are watching these races on Saturday, right when the horses cross the finish line, you can often still get these odds. Um, and so it gives you the opportunity to say, OK, look, let's say I like Modonigal. I don't. But let's say I did. Right. And, and I wanted Modonigal 25 to one. But I wanted to wait to see how he ran in the wood. Well, they're still running the race when they're about to cross the finish line. You could still lock in that bet in a lot of offshore spots. That would be how I would play this if I wanted one of these horses, specifically Emmanuel uh, or Modonigal, Smile Happy, any of those. Wait till their race, right when they cross the finish line, jump on your book and bet it if you can. That's the most effective way to get a really good number and also protect yourself so that you have it before, after the race instead of before the race. Anything else that you want to cover, Mike? I know we're pretty excited about this weekend. We've got the three major Kentucky Derby prep races, and then we know the field. So uh, we're getting closer to the big day, buddy. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this weekend is going to tell us a lot. I'm really excited to see the bluegrass, not necessarily because I love the horses in there. It's going to be the first time we get to cross-pollinate these different divisions. We get to see Florida horses against New York horses, against Louisiana horses, against Arkansas horses. And so I'm excited to see what the best conference is. I always, I always talk about it like that, like it's an NCAA tournament or like a college bowl season. One conference usually shines over the rest. I think we're going to find a little bit more about what conference that might be on Saturday. And that will help me make my Kentucky Derby pick. And fun fact, seven of the last 10 horses to cross the finish line first in the Kentucky Derby were all based in California. So pay attention very closely to the San Anita Derby this weekend, as oh, well as the Wood Memorial <laughs> and the Bluegrass Stakes at Keelan. Head over to racenews.com. We've got you covered with free picks for every race, every track around the country. The inside track to the Bluegrass Stakes wagering guide is available for pre-sale. And that race, that guide is going to include full coverage of Keeneland's Saturday card, as well as coverage of the San Anita Derby and the Wood Memorial. You'll have top four consensus picks from everybody on the team, including these two good-looking guys. Hit like if you like the video. Subscribe if you really like it. Tell us below in the comments what you think about Kentucky Derby Future Wager Pool 5. We'll see you at the track. This has been a presentation of RacingDudes.com, your destination for all things horse racing and sports betting. Whether you want free winners, expert insider picks, up-to-the-minute trackside weather reports, or podcasts and videos for bettors of all skill levels, never make another wager without visiting the Racing Dudes first.